inside my own world of make believe. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep. I love everything. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. <clears throat> Hello everyone, my name is Edward and today we'll be commentating the 6th round of the Anti-Style F1 series here at Imola. Today, as always, I'm joined by Beagles and alongside us we have a new name. Well, not really a new name because you guys know him. He's the champion, Alex Eguia. Man, great to have you here with us. Yeah, hello everybody. Yeah, it's it's sad to not be on on the actual race, just commentating. But yeah, it's a, a new experience for me. Um, I couldn't attend the race uh, this one and and the, the rest of the season. And yeah, maybe I will hang out um, with you guys and, and have a bit of a chat here. Alex. Yeah, that would be absolutely lovely, Alex. Uh, congratulations too on that win last week. What a way to go out in style. Uh, Ed, I, know, I think you weren't around for that one, mate. But you know. You know who's usually up on the top step, Mr. Smooth Operator. That's me <laughs> joining us in the, in the casting box today. So that's going to be fun to hear from your technical information as well, too, Alex. Is if anybody can drive a Formula One car around a track, well, you certainly can. Yeah, Alex, I, I think it's. Uh, I'm reading the chat, Alex, and I'm seeing a lot of hype for you being here with us, which is, which is just great yeah. to see. Uh, hopefully uh, they are not too hard on me because it's it's my first time commentating. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's going to be I think um, a super fun race, a super fun quali qualifying also because it's uh, pretty hard to overtake here, uh, even with the VRS. So yeah, let's see how it goes. And uh, Ed, Ed, I believe we're going to have some new features too, of course, as we're approving every week here at Any Store Racing. We'll keep that one a little bit of a surprise for you guys later on out there. Once again, thank you very much for watching in the chat. Obviously, the big shout outs there to Alex. We got Ben's out there. We got Ed himself. It's in their chat there. We got Basanity. And uh, obviously, Alex himself is in the chat. Basanity is, is Benjamin oh, C. So. It's Benjamin, yeah. We got Od Odwin. That's the Odwin. Did we get these names correctly? You weren't here last week. But uh, you could, you're the one we need for your pronunciations of those names. That's the Scandinavian driver. I think the number 82, if you can pronounce that one correctly. He's in the chat. Yeah, it's Oivind, Oivind Haugland, I think. Okay. Hopefully I haven't mispronounced his name. But uh, yeah, it's it's much easier name than uh, what we've had in the past here. At, yeah, uh, <laughs> you can, you're the best at that, my friend. Yeah. And also, obviously, our fantastic director, the man that puts on everything behind the scenes, Mr. Gerald Gezer. G'day. You can say a quick hello there. He's putting all together that production that you see. Hello, hello. So we got four of us in the in the book over here. So trust me, there's plenty of information. Not, nothing's going to get missed with uh, four pairs of eyes. Yeah, Alex, I was uh, right before the stream started. I looked at some stats from the season, and one thing that I've noticed was the fact that you finished first or second in every single race this season. And I, I'm just wondering, how do you feel about this season overall? Because my God, you've had a run and a half. It's been it's been great. Um, it helped a lot that uh, there are the same the same tracks are as last season because you know you you don't have to to renew or redo every every setup. 
the car is basically the same as last season, so so you know that um, where the car spins, where the car can go faster or slower. So yeah, it, it was like um, uh, take all the previous job you've done the season before and, and just do it uh, again. Um, there are some drivers that uh, we drive uh, as well as, uh, as last season, so you know them, but also um, many new fast drivers like uh, or even like, um, like Benjamin. So, yeah, it's uh, it's cool to to fight with them, and yeah, uh, as I said, it's the same car as uh, as last season, so so it's pretty easy to 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 move from one season to another. Okay, I see. And I'm really curious. Obviously, you are having an advantage in the championship of 29 points. So, thinking that you will not be racing today, will you be like happy if one of of your opponents crashes? Sorry, if you lose any points, or do you just enjoy this race and commentating with us? I I just focus on on enjoying it, uh, broadcasting and, and commentating because uh, you know I, I can do anything about it um, on the championship. It's not like I'm going to, to miss one race. It's going to be the, the full season. But yeah, the the more interest in the race, I think the better it is for us, for commentators and and watchers. Okay, I see. Great, great to hear your your perspective, and obviously having your technical approach in this race is going to be amazing. And talking about uh, technical approach, I'm curious, how do you approach that chicane at uh, at the end of of, of the lap? Uh, I think there are turns 13 and 14, if I'm not wrong. You know what I'm talking about? Is the chicane where yeah. not a crash crashed, and is that it's chicane where I crash every time when I'm trying Imola? Yeah, is is the um, the chicane we are um, going through right now on the on the stream and that chicane and even the the turn before Aqua Minerali, uh, you have to you have to be very easy. Uh, you, you can only lose time there. Uh, you can uh, be more aggressive in turns two, three, and four, five, six. Uh, but um, once you are there on on Variante Alta, uh, that chicane. And even also uh, Aqua Minerali, if if you can use you can see your delta on its screen because you're uh, gaining time on your best lap. Just take it easy. Don't uh, go over the curve because because the car will fly. Um, don't be too aggressive on the exit because first of all you can do an off track and and watch your your fast lap. Also you can do um, uh, a slowdown mid race so that uh, that will be crucial not to do it. And yeah, just focus on acceleration because you have a, a long straight, you have a, a kink in the middle, but um, a long straight uh, up until the last um, corners. So just uh, take it easy, um, don't overdo the, the turn because it's, it's pretty easy to, to, to lose the car. Yeah, Alex knows that stuff around this uh, classic track. And just so uh, somebody pointed that out, I completely forgot about that one. As, but uh, yes, we will actually be going here for the real Formula One weekend to this famous track back again. It's been recently added into the Formula One calendar. But two Italian tracks, of course, two classics. This is one in Monza. Uh, that's my uh, house that I'm renting right next to the track. You'll see it. There's a few people in a bit pit lane kerfuffle going on. I'm not using that word actually this week. That's done and dusted. Now, another word this week I have to come up with. But tricky tyres wise as well there, Alex. Uh, would you be expecting people just to qualify on those softs? Uh, anybody really gamble it and try the medium tyres there and put in a good time and then go a lot longer in the race? Yeah, it's, it's one of the um, of the um, how do you say it? Uh, the um, you will you will not destroy your tires, your soft tires. So I think you can go pretty easily um, uh, do all the whole race on on the soft tires, which you cannot do because you have to you have to do a mandatory pit stop. But yeah, maybe qualifying on medium. I see Paulo Lopez on on ninth position doing that. Um, that can be done. Um, Example in Red Bull Ring last uh, week, it's um, it's a track that hates um, soft uh, soft tires. So it, it's it's better to do maybe one soft one 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 lap with the soft tires as we did, and if there is a safety car, you can pit and put the, the medium tires. I think Oibin uh, went uh, aggressive, fine with the mediums. Um, 
then uh, put in the soft, but yeah, with uh, a lab one um, pit stop, it's uh, it's pretty crazy around here, around there. Mm. But here it's pretty easy to to do a whole race on the soft tire. So yeah, maybe maybe someone is is gambling on it. Ah, uh, so Ed, Ed uh, you just heard that. So I guess he's not going to try the Alex Alban approach there and just do the whole race on hards and just box in the last lap. And not not the hard, but the softs, <laughs> the softs, yeah. On the subs. No, no, but remember in the Formula One, the real Formula One, when Alex did the whole race on hards, then boxed right at the end. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Did you guys not see know. the Formula One race? <laughs> yeah, that was, no, <laughs> yeah. no, that was the sparkle of genius from <laughs> whoever the strategy. Yeah, he got a point. <laughs> so, so you could, yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess, uh, Alex, as you said, you probably could, you'd go all the way, or you still have to box, obviously it's mandatory, but yeah, whether the tires would be doable. And what about, can you use hards? I can't remember, actually. Are they even available? Uh, they, they are available, the available, yeah, but um, yeah. Yeah, they are pretty, mm-hmm. pretty slow. Um, it's pretty hard to warm them, warm them up as well. Um, I think they are, um, at least on 50% races, um, they are not worth it. Because you are uh, like one, one point something seconds slower and they are not... Um, I can't remember a track where you cannot do a 50% lap uh, race uh, with medium tires. Okay. And you would know. So that's great. It's having your knowledge up in the commentary box with us. As much as you'd like to be down on track currently at the moment, setting those times, which exactly is currently Benjamin seems to be the man that's been performing quite well recently as well to the German. One's coming in league once 13.64. Is that around a good time? You're thinking this is a practice session, of course. This is all of that. Yeah, I didn't practice here, but I think it's a pretty good lap because uh, also Eloy, which uh, is a, um, a new driver this season, I think. Yeah, he he drove uh, with us on on last season, on season one. Uh, they're on the same uh, on the same team. Also Hans, uh, which uh, qualifies pretty well, it's also a thirteen seven. So yeah, it's, I think it's it's gonna be a good time. And as I said before, it's a pretty pretty tricky track to to overtake so yeah but paul this uh this season it's uh it's pretty pretty interesting yeah one thing to, to make sure this is actually qualifying this is not the practice oh, session this my is bad i'm a day late the dollar the, short yeah yeah for the demo race but jimmy right. Zist is on provisional pole with a 113.64 eloy cabanero is very close to him with a 113.66 so that's one tenth of a second between them two as we're seeing a half spin there. Alvaro Gutierrez goes up in fifth place. Anyways, uh, Benjamin Ziz, as you've said, because he is having actually an amazing season. He has been on the podium in the last three races. And while well, taking into consideration the fact that Alex Iguera will not participate in the season as, as a racer anymore, this means that Benjamin Ziz has the first chance to win the championship. So obviously when you yeah. see the championship being so close to you, you have an, uh, another motivation to go there and win races. And he's doing just that right now. Yeah, you're not going to keep reminding Alex and he's going to have a little bit more of a tear to his eye every time we keep saying that he's not <laughs> going to be participating in the rest of the season. But you're right. I mean, you've got you've to seize those opportunities. As much as, you know, these other gladiators on track would love to be racing uh, and beating, hopefully if they could, you know, Alex. But in this case, they're not going to have it. So you've got to seize that opportunity. And we've seen some great racing. You missed some great racing last week, of course, Ed. But uh, you've got things to do, of course. It's good to have you back. Hopefully these uh, gladiators, once again, will provide us with some great entertaining racing with those alternative strategies and all that jazz. I'm not sure at pit lane time around here. Off the top of my head, I don't have it's my. Long. I, it's it's, it's going long. to be one of the um, of the longest one. Yeah, maybe 22, 24 seconds. Maybe I, I don't know. I I have uh, those things note on my on my setup um, alongside the other things I did to the car. I think it's pretty important, you know, because uh, maybe you are P one with nobody behind, and uh, you watch your relative. And if uh, if the pit stop, you know that uh, it lasts uh, twenty five seconds, and you see a gap, like you have to be like your own engineer, like um, um, knowing where you compete and if you will be in traffic, pit exit or not. And yeah, you have to keep those numbers uh, in, in mind, like uh, twenty four seconds. Yeah, and, and, and if you see a gap on the on the relative black box, you have to you have to pit that lap. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be one of the longest one. Yeah, because uh, I've just now seen the chat. Uh, yeah, I'm making it up. Respond to yeah. your thing. 
Yes. Ocon actually did a no pit in Turkey 2020, but that was on inter tires. So basically, when ah. you are racing on the wet or inter tires in real life, those tires can last an entire race on pretty much any track of the calendar. Uh, obviously, from Ocon, that was an, an amazing strategy. He managed to, that with, to, to finish the race without a pit stop. And I think he got points, if I'm not wrong. Well, I, I might be wrong with this one. But anyways, great, uh, great uh, race from yeah. the Renault driver. I'd have to ask somebody like Dougie Falcons or a few other drivers that I know. They're walking Wikipedia's to tell you who finished what in, in race in 1964, if you want. That's how much knowledge he has. But uh, anyway, you can Google it if you really want to find out. But yeah, you're right. It's the inter stops. You don't have to stop on the inters. Which We've I've seen, seen a couple of F1 races from the game where they... Uh, a full inter race before uh when hopefully when we get water rain per se in i racing coming soon that you guys would get to see if you could try the same thing there and do an inter run or if it's uh, a wet race <laughs> i'm 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 so hyped for the rain and on i racing it's um they also say yeah, it's pretty soon pretty soon yeah but uh season passed and, and it's not coming but yeah maybe no, maybe but the but the end of the year or something like that. They were working like on just the pure effects or something like that because um, there was there were uh, a lot of photos, not not renders, but uh, actual photos of. Um, I think it was um, uh, McLaren F1, and also I don't know if it was uh, Formula V or the um, or the Skippy as well with the um, the rain tires. But yeah, we I think uh, a lot of drivers are are pretty hyped with this. I don't know if you guys have seen the new Unreal 5 engine too, because it would be amazing if they could use the Unreal 5 engine graphics with the physics of this game would be absolutely amazing how realistic it would look. People would be, we'd be getting copyright violations and take it down on YouTube because they'd say that we'd be stealing actual F1 content. That's how real it would be. Yeah, that'd be awesome, yeah. So there's so still... Pretty uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, pretty interesting that um, I can see his name, but um, before we have a medium tire strategy, uh, ending with the, with the soft tire, he's going to be so much quicker at the end. So yeah, pretty interesting to to see that. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about him, Dominic Savitsky, who is a new name, the new kid on the block here. He haven't participated in any of our other races. And he's up in fourth place. He has done 12 laps, the most of everyone. Well, not, not the most of, of everyone. The most of everyone in the top five. He's on the mediums and he's in fourth place. So that's an amazing, an amazing start of, of the day for, for the driver that, that runs with number seven. Yeah, on, on paper, the, the medium, medium then soft uh, is the, the best strategy. On, on i racing and on this car um, because you're so fast at the end uh, people you know also lost concentration and, and everything but on paper it's it's the fastest one but you have to count on the safety car because if there is a safety car on the first lap and, and you are you qualified on mediums uh, it's going to ruin your race but uh, as, as we said on Imola you can do the, the whole race on soft so yeah it's a pretty craziest not, not the craziest strategy and i think it's going to be um up until the last lap it's going to be interesting yeah alex i'm thinking about last season and if i'm not wrong here was a pretty controversial race because you and radishki gregor i think has had an incident um which made him win the race if i'm not wrong but i i'm not really sure um, on Imola, it was P1 all alone, and I hit a, a landmine, if we can call him like that. Uh, it's like a, a, a minor bump on the game. And yeah, with, um, with tires, with a lot of laps, uh, I braked on the same spot as uh, every lap with uh, the same force. And I ended up locking up like 50 meters with, uh, with those tires because uh, the car bottomed the... The, um, yeah, the bottom of the car hit the uh, hit the ground. It went up, and I locked the the, the wheels where, while they were on on the air. And yeah, I I went out uh, on, the, on the second to last corner, and I I lost P1. I didn't know who who won, but uh, yeah, that that was um, yeah. I I ended up that race uh, a bit frustrated because it's not like your fault because. Um, 
it's something that happens, you know, yeah, it's, there's a crazy spot that, uh, that you encounter on while breaking and, and that's it. But um, yeah, um, I, I remember that it was like a, a three-way battle at some point yes, uh, on the yes. race. Yes, I just checked now. So the race has been won by Mark Stevens, and I, I've, I've just made the connection now. So you have crashed with Radecki Gregor in uh, Monza, so that was the other Italian race. This is why I, I uh, made the mistake. And I remember back in Imola, there was the very close battle for the championship between you and Mark Stevens. And uh, I remember saying on the stream, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is like real life Hamilton versus Verstappen. And it was amazing. It was amazing watching you two battling head to head every race. Obviously, you've done a mistake and the balance was going to Mark Stevens. But yeah, in the end of the season, you have been amazing and won the title. Anyways, one minute left here for 45 seconds, actually. We're having Benjamin Z's in first place. He has improved his lap time with 113.38. Iloy Capaniero improves as well, but uh, only stays second. Hannes Logel in third place. And Oivin Haugland in, in fourth place. Dominic Savitsky has fallen down in fifth place, but there's something important to keep in mind about Dominic. He is on the medium tires, so that's... Uh, that's going to play a big part in the race. And also it's... Um, oh, it's whoa, whoa. Uh, in there, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's one of the turns that you have to, to keep it safely, keep it easy. Maybe he was a tenth down or something and, and he wanted to, to break a meter later or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's crazy because on qualifying, um, this season we are going like uh, 12 p.m. I think it is uh, same time. And... Um, as time goes on, the track uh, temperature will rise, and so it's harder to improve your, your lap times. So it's pretty important to, to be the first one on qualifying. I don't know if, if you guys noticed, but I, I try to be the first one, you know, with clean air and, and having the, the track as, as cold as possible uh, to set your fast lap and, uh, at the beginning of the qualifying. Yep. Anyways, qualifying is now done as we are preparing for the race. I think we will go now through the final results of the qualifying. Anyways, Benjamin Ziz is in pole position. So I've got the information that they are not working. Is that right? Okay, so, so they are loading. Anyways, Benjamin Ziz, pole position, the winner from Hockenheim Ring will start in pole position. So... These are the standings. Benjamin Zis, Paul Poisson, Eloy Cabanero in second place. Hannes Logel will start in third and Oivin Haugland in fourth place. Dominic Savitsky, the new kid on the block, will start fifth on the medium tires and Dranso Valle will be sixth. John Peter Runde in seventh place and Alvaro Gutierrez in eighth place. Lam Kerr ninth and Anthony Serrano will complete the top ten. James Dawson eleventh, Paulo Lopez in twelfth place. Tyler Nelson in 13th place and Max Hus is the last driver to complete a lap in 14th place. We still have two more drivers on the grid with Luke Peters and Stefan Hochman for the Imola Grand Prix. So we're preparing for the start. I have already gone through the grid, but we can see it on screen right now with every driver being very beautifully put on their row alex do you have any actual start uh, procedure like do you think anything before the start do you listen to music do you do you check your instagram before the race or what's happening between qualifying and race um just make sure you load your your race setup because uh, you cannot um put fuel on the car so that's the most important thing um i personally have a second clutch uh, so it's pretty easy to to set up your start. Just um, concentrate, concentrate. Uh, know where you have to break on on the first corner, and yeah, just uh, do as you as as you have always done, and and you know it. Um, try to avoid everything. Um, yeah, check your mirrors, check left and right. Um, it's it's not like something you can prepare for. Some sometimes to improvise but um yeah just um 
having your your mind clear it's my it's my go routine okay and one quick question because we are 20 seconds bef- away from the start are, are you feeling stressed before the start or you just don't think about anything you're just fully focused yeah i think it's the most um, the most stress i can i can feel i also have a hard monitor of on my on my streams and it's like um 160 150 uh, bits per minute so yeah it's it's pretty pretty crazy okay thank you alex 15 seconds before the start we have a poll there uh, created by our great producers our great producer actually will benjamin keep you on in the first lap 67% of you guys think that he will keep the first place 32% don't think that he will he will keep the first place as we're seeing the lights on we have five lights away, ahead of the drivers and away we go this is a great a good start from benjamin this not a great start from Louis Cabanero, but the top two gets away very very well as they build a gap ready to hanish logal there in third place So everyone goes cleanly through the first section of corners. As I'm seeing, there are some changes in the bottom of the standings. I'm looking now at Dominic Savitsky, who is down in seventh place. So from fifth, he has fallen down in seventh place. Ovin Haugland now is being chased down as there's contact. We've seen that contact. I think that was Mike Hus. In, Ma- Max was in, involved in that incident, but not that crazy out here. It's a pretty calm start considering our our other starts from this league. Jared, I have a question. On our screen, it appears that Savitsky is on the soft tires, but he qualified on the medium compound tires. Do you have any information on that? Uh, I'll take a quick look. One second. Are you talking about Paulo Lopez? No, no I'm in, talking uh, about Dominic Savitsky. Paulo Lopez Mike. actually has qualified on the soft compound tires, and he's, he's starting on the, on the mediums. So that's yeah, but he's, he's actually I, gained. I, I, he's gained three positions, so he's outside the, the as outside the top ten where he started. Yes. Oh, okay. Anthony's okay. gained three. Paulo also qualified. And Tyler's in gained three, as well. So they've uh, they're outside the top ten. Nothing's changed in the top four. Alberto. Gutierrez is in up two positions, as well as Anthony Ferrero as well. P6 and P7. Currently something just... something <laughs> happened to Max Hus, I think, because on my screen he has topped somewhere on track. Anyways, that was a blunder of a start from... Uh... Oh, here he is. He's not stopped, but he lost a lot of time. Anyways, that was a blunder of a start from Dominic Savitsky losing three places. John Peter Runde lost seven places and he's losing even even more places. He's down in 14th place. Uh, maybe the start procedure it wasn't uh, okay. Uh, if, if you if you spin your tires, you can lose up to two three positions. Also, um, the first corner you can be like um, like a cage uh, with other drivers and people are going to to overtake you. That's something that that could have happened. Okay, I'm really curious. You talked uh, before the race about loading your setup. What happens if you forget or you don't load your setup? Um, if you don't load your setup, you're you're going to to load the um, the qualifying one. So you have to you are going to have uh, like six uh, five kilos of uh, of fuel, and you cannot refuel mid race. So yeah, by by the end of la, lap two, lap three, you're going to be oh big crash. There. It's a huge crash. That's James Dawson. Being being turned around. Oh, that is a huge crash. Thankfully, this is just a game, and you can go oh, back to the pit lane without any real consequences. Let's see what happened. Oh, he lost the back end, hit the wall, and oh, there was a huge, huge impact. Oh, yeah, this say. looked this looked like something we've seen in real life, but yeah, we shouldn't talk about that because. It's uh, yeah, it was a sad moment for Formula One. Uh, maybe maybe the DTR with the acceleration with the car in front when you are um, um, like one second or less of the car in front, uh, the acceleration, the the front end grip, uh, it's going to to be uh, less than that you are used to. Yeah, it's pretty easy to to watch the to watch the acceleration or or the breaking point. Okay, so someone in the chat has just confirmed. 
that Savitsky okay. did his quality lap on soft. So that means he started on soft. Yeah, maybe he was trying to to do a quick lap on the on the mediums. Yeah, that's um, that's something you can you can you can do. You can try the soft and the mediums, and and then you have to qualify. Then you have to start the race. The so, so, sorry, Alex. There was a spin. I think that was Hannes Schlogel, the driver who has he finished the podium last week. Let's see what happened. Oh, we just lost the yeah, back end. Yeah. Just lost the back end on Tosa and that was half spin. This made him lose a lot of positions down in ninth place. It's no great for Hannes Schlogel. Also, Paulo Lopez was going backwards as there's someone that appears to be out, Lam Kerr. So, a lot of incidents. It seems like it's a, an easy track to, to crash here. Uh, you have to be very concentrated, uh, a lot of chicanes, a lot of uh, high curves, um, and, and also you are be, uh, stuck behind the car, that's uh, pretty frustrating. Let's see if Hans pits or not, uh, he's staying with the, with the soft tires. I, it could be a great strategy to, to, to beat now, because uh, he has a lot of tra uh, traffic in front. Um, he locked the tires trying not to, to hit the wall, so they can be a bit destroyed. Um, yeah, yeah and, he, he has to think about it. Yeah, uh, sorry, Alex uh, as well too. Uh, do you get a little bit of? Do you get a floorboard damage underneath the car? Any like even from a spin? Does it affect the damage? Like in, not from a spin. Maybe if you hit uh, the high curves a lot. Maybe you can, but uh, I think it's not. Uh, it's not that crazy as you can see in an, on another car like the LMP2 or something like that. Uh, floor damage hasn't been uh, hasn't been um, so so crazy with this car. Oh, as we're seeing another crash. Oh, talking about a floor damage. right there, and that's Pulley's Bob pulled off the side of the road there to head there. What's happened to Bob? One. Uh, he he he, he braked it on the uh, on the grass. Like span. Let's see this very bad because uh, with the DRS it's going to be pretty interesting and in the turn one. Yeah, Juan So Ovale is being attacked, if I'm not wrong. So no, Alvaro Gutierrez actually is attacking Juan So Ovale. Juan So Ovale is the car in front. So your connectional, Alex, is trying to get into the top four, but Juan So Ovale just keeps that position. The winner from Spa remains in fourth place, but... I always felt that the straight line before, like the start finish straight, it's it's so easy to overtake there if you have the slipstream. It's a, it's a, a track uh, where you can uh, go pretty high or pretty low on the um, the downforce. I mean, it's going always always going to be high downforce, but uh, you can you can have a, a fine adjust your your front wing and and we're going to be even more or or less uh, downforce. Um, I didn't think Alvaro wanted to overtake there because he was on the, um, on the, um, on the right hand side of the, of the straight. So yeah, maybe he's um, just uh, watching Juancho, knowing where he can uh, overtake, or maybe he's, uh, he's waiting for later, I don't know. Yeah, Benjamin Zis, anyways, he's building a big gap to his opponent. Ilya Cabanero is now 3.7 seconds behind Benjamin and the gap is increasing and increasing as Nelson is trying to overtake Paulo Lopez but now he has just to stay behind. Paulo Lopez and Tyler Nelson both has won, have won five places from the start so that's a great recovery for those two. Alvaro Gutierrez is still close to Jean Sovale but he doesn't seem to get any way past his opponent as Eloy Cabanero goes off track. Eloy Cabanero has done a mistake actually, he is off track. Yep. Oh, he's, he's, he crashed. So from second place, Eloy Cabanero is that's going a broken suspension. very, yeah, very slow. Oh, that's, that's a broken rear suspension. You have to, you have to tow or, yeah. Yeah, to yeah tow. he's towing, he's back to the pit lane. So this is a disaster for Loi Cabanero. He's had such a good race. Let's see what happened. He did. He lost it. Yeah, he touched the grass and uh. goes straight in the wall. But how? How is the suspension? Ah, oh, this is how the suspension image came from. Oh, that was an unsafe. Uh, I was 
close to say an unsafe release, but I was an unsafe recovery on the track. Because uh, uh, you want to, you, you want to be as quick as possible on back on track, but uh, that's like the the hard blow, the hard mo the the hard moment there. Um, and and you don't think about it. Yeah, it's uh, uh, that that curve. It's um, it's pretty weird because uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, high diff difference because uh, on the inside of the track and the outside of the track. Oh yeah, you can uh, like um, maybe his his uh, rear right wheel were free on the air, like uh, something like that, and and that's why he spun. Yeah, but anyways, Alex Tyler Nelson is very close and he's trying a move here. Oh, this is not the place mm -hmm. that you. That you can overtake, I think. Obviously, you you are better at uh, at knowing places to overtake here at Imola, because we've seen last season your overtakes. But I'm sure that that corner, Aqua Minerali, is, is not no, not a Aqua Minerali Piratella is is not a place that you that you want to to be side by side with someone. See, it's not the the. the um... A common, a common turn to overtake, but with the uh, you can play with the battery deployment. So yeah, it's uh, like um, medium straight before that. So you can deploy a lot of battery and be alongside. Also, it's a, a fast corner, so people is going to be very conservative not to not to crash another driver. So yeah, you can uh, you have to expect the unexpected. You know, um, you have to to if you are going to send it on on turn one, it's going to be. Uh, like um, like the expected move, so you can deploy your battery, open your DRS, and, and all that. People will know that you will launch it there. But yeah, sometimes you can maybe deploy battery uh, from here, so, so you can be. Sorry, sorry. Time penalty for car number thirty-eight for an unsafe rejoin. Yeah, just what I said. That's an unsafe rejoin. From Juancho. Uh, from Juancho Valles, there was someone going very slow. I'm not really sure who he was there. I think he's a lap car. So he, he was off track and he's beating. No, it, it was actually Dominic Savitsky who was off track. Let's see what happened to the driver from, from Europe, it appears. Again, Shupiratella. So this corner puts another driver. In, in a bad position, he comes back on track very safe, uh, not very safe. He made Hans Schlogger slow down, but surely safer than... Yeah, uh, he, can, he can be proud because uh, because it happened to uh, the same to me as last season, because um, yes, maybe something similar to what happened to Eloy. Uh, like the the bottom of the car is it's um, it's touching the the curb, so your your oh, wheels. Oh, this is not a crash. It's not a crash. Sorry, Alex. I think that's Alvaro Gutierrez being in the wall. If he's lost a lot of positions, let's see. Yep, that's Alvaro Gutierrez from third place, uh, fourth place actually. Alvaro Gutierrez has crash. Oh, and this is a big crash. He will surely have to go back, and this is not great for the Spaniard. It's crazy, you know. Um, uh, you asked me a couple of uh, races before if I how how do I manage um, a lonely race, and I think yeah, from from El Eloy lost it on P2, Hans lost it on P3, now Alvaro he was P5 or P of P4, and yeah, it's uh, when you are alone you have to concentrate a lot um, because this thing happened, you know. Uh, look at Benjamin, he has now a seventh uh, second gap, and you have to to. Be very strong, constantly uh, doing lap by lap by lap, uh, the same as before, and, and not make any mistake. Yeah, and as Paulo Lopez is being attacked again by Taylor Nelson, but Paulo Lopez, what he's doing, he's positioning his car on the center of the of the track, and there's no way for Taylor Nelson to go because on the outside there's no space, and on the inside there's no space either. So, on the only place where Tyler Nelson is faster, he cannot overtake, so Paulo Lopez keeps his place as Tyler Nelson goes from attacker to defender because Dominic Savitsky wants to recover some places as we're going to Piratella, which is the corner, the problematic corner of the day. We've seen already five incidents in that corner today, so everyone should just take it easy through there. In order to finish, At least, this is huge. This is huge for Paulo because he can he can drive away. Maybe um, one tenth on the main straight is going to save your life, and, and, and Tyler is not going to to overtake you. 
Yeah, yeah and, and I'm sure Dominic Savitsky now he's he, he is angry because he's done a mistake. He was up there on the top. He's had a good qualifying and now he's down in sixth place. He wants those positions back. A Tyler Nelson understands the fact that he's slower and he goes for the undercut. He's the first car from the top 10 to box for new tire. Well, actually, Liam Kerr has boxed as well, but obviously he has boxed because of an incident. Let's see. Tyler Nelson, will he get Paulo Lopez with the undercut? But Paulo Lopez is actually on the medium compound tire. So yeah, he's, go he's going... It's going long, it's going to be uh, very quick at the end. It's a pretty um, smart move from Tylo because um, um, I think it was uh, Anthony or no, who it was uh, behind him uh, had um, a, a great exit, so he's going to be overtook anyways. So just give him the arrest and you're going to be in touch with the, with the medium tires now. Something, Dominic, happened, sorry. something happened to Benjamin. Jared, I think we show Benjamin Ziz has lost the first place. So, Alex, we were talking about Ooh, how hard yeah. it is to drive a long race. Oh, he's spinned. Oh, this is this is incredible. Benjamin Ziz from a seven second advantage. He has lost the first place. Not only the first place, but only the second place because he has gone into the pit lane. So, Benjamin Ziz is now in the pit lane. He has done a big mistake and now he will try to, to, to do the undercut in order to get those positions back. But look how Oivin Haugland is in first place as Hanesh Logal goes back in fourth place. So, Alex, this race doesn't look anymore like a race of who's the fastest, but more of a race of who can survive. Yeah, that's it. And now we have uh, like a three second, um, second lead with uh, Oibin and Juancho, and also Benjamin is going to be there. Yeah, it's smart um, pitting where, where you are angry, because uh, it's a long pit straight, you can recompose your mind, like relax again, um, you know how to do f uh, fast laps, so just make them again. And yeah, with the, with the undercut now, it's, it's going to be uh, crazy fast in the outlap. Yeah, you, you, you calm yourself down by going through the pit lane. Me, if I would be first place and I would spin around, I would being honest, I would delete the game forever. <laughs> yeah. So, Oivin Haugland is now in first place as he has fans in the chat. I don't know if he is his friend from real life or maybe his teammate. Alex, I know you are part of an esports team, if I'm not wrong. The team that you have represented in our championship as well, right? Uh, yeah, I'm driving for Rincon Racing, which is um, a team based on, on Spain and, and Argentina as well, with uh, a lot of drivers. Uh, we compete with um, uh, with formulas and GTs and, and Spanish and yeah, I think the international. Yeah, maybe a couple of uh, drivers try for an, an international series. So yeah, I'm, I'm one of the few that uh, drives Formula because uh, everyone else is uh, driving uh, GTs. But yeah, it's it's fun. And how did they feel about you winning the championship? Were they like, come on, Alex, you brought the cup <laughs> to us. Amazing. Yeah, so, so, sometimes, yeah. But um, yeah, I also was um, used to stream my, my races and, and they are supporting me. Um, yeah, it's, uh, we, we, can, uh, we can go to, to different championships and, and just focus on the car. I, I love Formula, so yeah, when, when there is... Um, Formula car to drive on, on any championship, um, important or not important, with prices or, or with not, they they count a lot on me. So so yeah, that's that's nice. Yeah, Hannes is in the pillar right now. He was in the battle with Tyler Nelson, so we should keep an eye on there to see if Tyler Nelson's undercut has worked. Let's see where will Hannes get out of the pit lane. As for watching Paulo Lopez, Paulo Lopez has started in 12th place and. With those medium tires, he is in third place, so he has won nine places in the first 14 laps. So, Hannes Schlogel is ahead of Tyler Nelson, and not only that he is ahead, he has an advantage of four seconds to the American driver, so the undercut did not work for Tyler. Uh, you have to be pretty fast on the on the outlap, uh, knowing uh, the warming your tires. It's also 
um, an important part of, of that lap. And now Oibin has to know where he will fall uh, when he pits. Also, Paulo has to be pretty aware uh, when he wants to pit, because uh, you cannot pit so much early to, to, to then do a lot of laps on the, on the soft tires, and, and not too late uh, to, not be, to not be quick on those tires. So yeah, you have to find the balance. Yeah, I'm really curious what will Benjamin do. I'm looking at his lap time. So Benjamin is, this, is being pretty fast. 116.27 from Benjamin. Oivind is on a 117.8. Oh, Benjamin is this goes purple. Uh, the fast lap Benjamin. Benjamin, yeah. Doing, if my math is correct, the gap between Oivin and Benjamin is 70 seconds the pit lane through here is about 22 24 seconds so this means that benjamin Ziz should go back in first place after everyone pits yeah maybe maybe, maybe he he did all the work now with uh, with those purple laps um but he has to to stay concentrated because uh you know he's going to be faster at the end with um with fresher medium tires and he will also be making uh, uh, fast laps oh I think he's speeding now so yeah that'd be interesting to see yep he is in I'm curious what will Paulo Lopez do because if we will have a safety car Paulo Lopez will come back oh, wait, oh, sure, yeah. let's see Oivin where is Oivin now I think we should keep an eye on the He's right now the pit lane. driver. He's now leaving the pit lane. Let's see. This is going to be close. Benjamin Z is just for fast. So this is it. Benjamin Z is back in first place. Oivin hasn't made, uh, has not made a mistake, but uh, Benjamin has. So yeah, he has to on his tail and, and watch and, and 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 put pressure on him. Because you know, uh, when you are alone, you can. It's it's easier maybe to to lose concentration. But uh, when you have a car behind, fighting for that DRS uh, second, um, it's more stressful. Oh, there's a crash. There's a crash. Anthony Serrano has crashed, and this is a huge one. He doesn't have the rear wing anymore. Let's see. Was that in the first section of corners? Yes, it was side by side with his opponent. I think that was Alvaro Gutierrez. He got a place. And then he lost it. Oh, on the acceleration, that's pretty. That's that's weird because he hadn't had an, a car on uh, the front. Yeah. I think he, he got the place and he just lost concentration and won. And also lost the car, not only the concentration. Paulo Lopez. Yeah, maybe he was taking his mirror or something like that. Paulo Lopez is. Still on those medium tires. When is he going to box? Because I'm looking at him and it reminds me a lot of what uh, Alex Albon has uh, has done last week in Formula One. I think he has to do at least ten laps on the on the soft tires, so still he has to beat um, the next few few laps. That will be, I think, it's um, to maximize the the soft tires. I'm very curious what is going to be the lap of Oivin Haugland in comparison to Benjamin, considering that Oivin has a new set of medium tires. <clears throat> Let's see. As Juan Valle goes in as well. So that means Paulo Lopez will be leading the sixth race of the season after starting down in. 12th place, so this is amazing. Oh, no, he's going in as well. So this is going to yeah, be... Yeah, yeah he, he heard us. He, he wanted to go in the, with the soft tires and maybe do a fast lap on the on the out lap. So 17 laps on the softs, if my math is correct. Yeah, you can, you can do the whole race, so maybe he went for the 50-50 strategy, 50%, the first 50% with the, with the medium, then with the soft. Uh, it's um, a pretty easy uh, track to, to, to um, save, tires. save your tires and, and be quick as well. So 
it's, it's not only um, saving tires uh, but quick as well. So yeah, it's um, it's a pretty great strategy. He, he has to went in front of Tyler, which is critical. But yeah, he has to to make some fast lap to to get to P4. Okay, so Paulo Lopez is 17 seconds behind Benjamin Seas. We have 17 laps to go, so this means about one second a lap faster than Benjamin Seas. Is the tire difference that big in order to Paulo Lopez recover one second per lap? Or do you think that this race is going to go Benjamin's way? I think he it's going to be for, for Benjamin if he hasn't he if he uh, doesn't make uh, any other mistake because uh, we know he's fast. He qualified uh, three tenths faster than than P2, and he was like eight nine seconds ahead P2 when when he spun. So yeah, um, just um, keep it on keep it on on the on the gray surface. And concentrate. Uh, also, watch your relative uh, and not drop behind uh, two or seconds or, or even one. Don't don't give him, don't give him DRS, and and that's it. And I think uh, he was Juancho, maybe the the one who did a a, a purple lap, lap. Yeah, he was pushing. No, that was actually Hannes Logel in purple one fifteen point six six for Hans. He wants to recover those positions that he lost. We know that Hannes has also done a mistake through Tosa. Yeah, he was the first the first one having a span, I think. Yep, the first of many. So Benjamin Ziz and Oivin Hogland are in the top two right now. And Benjamin is faster than Oivin, although Oivin has the newer tires. So this is very interesting to see. Benjamin Ziz on old mediums is faster than Oivind on new mediums, as we're seeing a mistake here from Gutierrez, so this is another yeah, crash. Um, it's easy to lose the, the back end there. And another one. And another one. It's incredible. Benjamin Ziz goes purple, and he sets the exact same time as... Hannes Logan? No. I think he was Hans, yeah. Yeah, it was Hans. Maybe, the exact same time. Maybe he's like me. He has the um, the telemetry on on a secondary on a secondary monitor or something. And when you when you see a purple there, you you want to you want to do it because you think you have the the race under control. Um, for sure, he's not um, he's not um, destroying the the battery. He's going to save it in case uh, Oibin comes uh, near. Yeah. yeah, one thing that I'm noticing is that only one, two, three, four drivers, only four drivers have had a clean race out of 16 and well, well also the safety car <laughs> has had a clean race so far, but only four drivers out of 16, Alex, what's going on? It's um it's a hard track to to concentrate. You have uh, a lot of um, of uh, high curves. And now I've been this uh, uh, below. Yeah, the two yeah, yeah. Up, I just so. I just wanted to mention. Sorry, Alex. I just wanted to mention. Oivin is one second behind Benjamin. So Benjamin has a mistake. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's crazy because we didn't. I think we have uh, we have been seeing him and. I didn't notice something strange, but uh, it's going to be a stressful situation for for Benjamin now, because uh, it's going to to see on the relative that uh, even is getting closer and closer. Yep, Anthony Sorano has gone purple, one fifteen point five eight. So from tenth place, he wants to get that extra point in order to put there on the championship. Now, Oivin Haugland is chasing down Benjamin Ziz even though Je Benjamin Ziz has set the fastest lap and we know that the German driver is super fast he's doing all these small mistakes that cost him a lot and obviously there's another aspect to this story 0.9 maybe he has the RS yeah Oivin also has newer tires so this is going to be an important aspect for for the race Eight tenths, seven tenths. Surely he has the RS because look how the gap is closing down. So now Benjamin has to have uh, one eye on the on on the road ahead and one eye on the on, on the the mirror. 
that's pretty stressful. I can I can assure you that. You can see how easy it is to lose the car on that curb as we're now going through Tosa and Maybe this, with the car. this this one corner that has caused so many mistakes Piratella at first it doesn't seem like a hard turn but well don't trust me because I, I'm still playing with the keyboard but <laughs> yeah it, it is a, it is a hard uh, hard corner so going on board very interesting camera angle we've started to see this this angle in real life Formula One I think Fernando Alonso has it the, the helmet camera has been missing the wall Benjamin Zis is in the wall we were talking about him doing mistakes and now he has gone straight there in turn 16. I think he was battling with the car and also with himself. He locked up the, the front left tire. He's, he's doing a copycat as I did on, on, on last season. Yeah, well, you won the championship, so <laughs> maybe he yeah, tries to play the same strategy. But it's not just not a nice strategy to, to crash on Imola with 10 laps to go and then win the championship. Oh, Tyler Nelson now is having a little bit of, of a battle with Dominic Savitsky. But, uh, oh, a lot, a lot of incidents, Alex. Is it that easy to lose concentration on this track? Or is, is this track actually tiring you mentally and you just cannot concentrate lap by lap by lap because of the corners? Yeah, I have to fight also with the off tracks. Maybe Benjamin was on, on the verge of, on, of having a drive through with a 16, a 17 um, off tracks or something like that. And he was trying not to boost. And that's one of the, um, of the hardest thing to do. Uh, but yeah, you have a lot of uh, turn where you, uh, where you can, where you are not safe because you can do uh, an off track and then slow down here. You can um, uh, have a, a gravel trip like Benjamin did on the on the next one. So yeah, it's, it's uh, turn after turn. What Ooh, is not that mistake? Was uh, yeah. Then it had to had to be patient there. It, it, it's it, yeah, it's an overtaking spot, but uh, it's pretty easier with the DRS. So now it's going to be attacked from, from Tyler behind. Yeah, Tyler on the slipstream. He moves on the right. Will he go around the outside? But yeah, look, he moved out of the slipstream and he lost a lot of the straight line speed. So this yeah, just shows, it shows the fact maybe, that uh, maybe he has had the uh, DRS. Maybe he had the DRS because it, it's in the middle of uh, of the um, last and second to last corner. So maybe he had the DRS with uh, Paulo Lopez in front, and that helped him uh, maintaining the position. Yeah, but I remember watching your race in your burning. You were constantly being slower when you moved out of the slipstream because of the setup you've had. If I remember correctly, you've had a setup that was concentrated on the corners. And when you moved out of the, of the slipstream, you were losing a lot of, of, of ground to the car in front. It's not that powerful. Maybe maybe he's uh, saving battery for later uh, because it was uh, the last stage uh, of the straight. So yeah, that, that will be a smart move, um, not getting out of the of the slipstream, but uh, saving your battery for for later if the car in front is is deploying it. I don't think so. I don't think so because look how much time has Tyler lost. Like it's pointless to save ERS and to lose this much time. But who knows? You are the driver here. I'm not. So <laughs> probably you are you are correct, with your son. And you have to be you have to be in the car as well because uh, I'm watching now a, a race uh, from from the commentators booth, and and it's uh, it's harder to understand when you are in the car. It's 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 more clear, and you know if you are deploying battery or, or if you are saving it. So maybe if you are losing time, you are not. Um, um, how do you say it? You are not. Um, you are not losing your mind about it because you know you are losing time because you are uh, saving battery for later or maybe um, studying your enemy where you can or you cannot uh, overtake him. And maybe in the commentators booth it's like, oh, he's losing, he's losing time. So yeah, on, 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 on the car, on board with yourself, it's, it's uh, pretty easier. It's like when Oibin uh, got close to Benjamin, he was like very hyped because he, know, he knew he was faster. Benjamin was on the on the other side of the of the psychology, knowing that he had a, a eight nine second gap a lead, and and he lost it with a span 
Then uh, he wanted to do the fast lap and did it, but uh, someone else took it, and and, and then he lost the um, lost the the breaking point. But yeah, you have to be mentally prepared for for all those uh, things, and and if you gain or you lose, you have to you have to keep that in mind. Yep, Alex. One thing that we should be keep an eye on is the battle for for first place because Benjamin Zist is not 100% out of the contention for this win. 1.6 seconds, he's 5 tenths faster every single lap to his opponent in first and he place. Was four, and, he, and when he spun, he was uh, 4 seconds uh, at drift, so yeah, he's, he's gaining his... He's in a lot of game. 1 second, 1 second between Oivind and Benjamin. Yeah, he, he, he had that demon inside and, and had to unleash it. Yeah, he really wants, he really wants that win, but again, like, like as, as Ayrton Senna said, in order to finish first, first, you need to finish. Anyways, Paulo Lopez, he is on those soft tires, on those fresh soft tires, but yeah, he's, he's losing a lot of time and he's not as fast as we thought. As we expected, yeah, we. Yeah, I think he would be on the 15th by the end of the of the race. Oh, look how powerful Slipstream and DRS are! And Paulo Lopez will go around the outside. No, he doesn't. Uh, Dominic Savitsky on the outside. Paulo Lopez braked very, very late there and kept that, kept his position, and he. Keeps fifth place for now, but we've seen that I think Paulo Lopez has a setup that is more focused on straight line speed because we've seen Paulo, the Portuguese driver, was an absolute sitting duck in comparison to Dominic. Yeah, and now we're uh, seeing. Oh, Benjamin. there's there is a mistake, there's a mistake from Hannes Logal. This is the second mistake, and now Hannes Logal is out of the race. We can see on the left hand side, he's in the pit lane. But there was a huge crash from him. This is the second mistake that the Austrian driver has done in this race. Let's see. And it's again Shupiratella. This is the I seventh car that we've seen. Between it's, it's oh. getting crazy for them. And they are, yeah, side by side. Benjamin and, and, and Oivin. So Benjamin recovered the, the, the gap. This is incredible. Benjamin is with two mistakes. With two big mistakes, he still is in contention to win this race as Paulo Lopez concedes now and goes down in fifth place. Dominic Savitsky back and forth. But this is incredible what the German driver can do. Yeah, that shows how, how fast he is. Uh, he has to study him. You have uh, six, um, six and a half laps now. So just study him, build your battery, know where you can overtook him. He's going to be a sitting duck with the DRS, but uh, you have to make sure that you build a second gap so it's not a, a DRS um, overtaking one each other and lap by lap. Yep. So now Benjamin Zis will have DRS, will have slipstream. This might be very. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> But let's see now. There is slipstream, but he's a little bit too far away. I don't think he will be able to do a move in turn one. No, he can't. Maybe after turn three. Let's see, but it's very, very hard to overtake in turn four. He looks on his side, but that's more of a move to to tell to tell Oivind, hey, I'm here. As Paulo Lopez gets the place back from from Dominic. Yeah, that's that what that is what Benjamin has to avoid, like uh, having DRS lap after lap and then giving to him and then being overtook. That's that's nice because that's an, an off track that you can that you can do. Just to study him, just be patient. You can do it not on the last lap, but the, the, yeah, don't want the last lap. You can you can do it. But also, Oivin is going to build battery and and deploying it on on that straight. You can see how fast Benjamin Zis is through these corners. So even looking at the lines of, of Oivind, I think he's a little bit stressed and talking about how we can see mm -hmm. that he's locked up. So it's clear that Oivin is feeling the pressure. Oh! Wow. Oh, maybe he did an off track and have a drive through. It's no, I don't think so. I don't think so. As we're seeing a rip. 
play of Tyler Nelson. So Tyler Nelson has had a moment there. Oh, yeah. He has spin, but what's going on to Oivind? He's in the pit lane. Paulo Lopez is in the pit lane. Dominic Savitsky is in the pit lane. Is the safety car out? Gerard, you are the man. Uh, doesn't look like it. Uh, no, the safety car is not out. So what's going on? This <coughs> even Haugland is in the pit lane. And he has been overtaken in the pit lane by Paulo Lopez. Of course, but he also did a pit stop. Look how much he's stuck in the pit lane. This is 43 seconds, 45 seconds. Maybe he had a mid-ball flag or something. What is pretty, that? Pretty weird. Uh, when, when you have a, a massive failure and you have to box, um, uh, you have to uh, do a mandatory pit stop to, to fix your car. I, I don't think that we have this thing on at ASR as far as I'm concerned, but we can see these are repairs. The car is getting raised once and twice. Oh! Oh, they ran out of fuel! No way! They ran out of fuel! This is incredible! Oh, it, it happened in real life in, I don't know, maybe in, in, in 80-something or 90-something. With uh, I think it was again on Imola. Yeah, maybe he. That's why he was. Um, th that's why he was um, slow on the on the on the straights because he was lifting. Yeah, but is, is there anything you can do or no? As far as I'm concerned, if you run out of fuel, this is it. It's race over, isn't it? You can you cannot do anything. You cannot refuel mid race, so it's it's game over for them. So I am now. We to... we have five four laps four four cars on track on the on the lead lap. Can you guys no, we only have fuel? four cars on track right now. No, five cars. Five cars on track. Anthony Serrano is also on track. So five cars on track right now. Yeah, they're saying on the on the chat that uh, it's supposed to be 31 laps at the, as the official races. So are, are we going to have any finisher in this race? I'm oh, not really uh, sure. Uh, Benjamin made it to the to lap thirty three. He has uh, for sure fuel for thirty five. This is madness. Then, uh, we we might see someone to win that we wouldn't have thought. But the one driver that I'm really sad that this happened, it's Paulo Lopez. He's had a run and a half this race. He was up in third place, and now he just ran out of fuel and he's down in eighth place. Anyways, we still have six, seven, eight cars on track. So only Howland, Lopez, and Steph. Juan Hochman have been no no Hochman Gutierrez have been uh, took by surprise with this situation as Lion Kerr goes purple. Yeah, that's uh, that's massive. That's, yeah, uh, but look, Lion Kerr is recovering seven. No, something is going on. Lion Kerr is recovering seven seconds per lap. And maybe every, everyone, uh, if we can see the lap times, maybe everyone is lifting and coasting, so so they are too slow. Yeah, and he's speeding as well. I, I, I can actually see the fuel. Let's see. So the fuel is... Oh, he's speeding! Benjamin Zis is in the pit lane! But he cannot refuel. What is going on? So who is now in the lead of the race? It's Juan Sovale! Oh no! What? He's put ah, he had a free stop and, and he wants to go for the fastest lap. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great that's strategy. Crazy. Let's see, I'm, I'm looking at the fuel. So, Benjamin Ziz now has 1.87 laps of fuel to go. That's And that's we okay. have two laps to go. So, that's that's. Perfect. Going to be very slow now to to make a fast lap at the end with the with the battery, new tires, and and low fuel. Yeah, but Lion, oh, look at Lion Kerr. What, Lion a crazy, Kerr. what a crazy race! This is this is something that we should be keeping an eye on. Lion Kerr is absolutely flying. He's ten seconds faster 
Not that Benjamin, because Benjamin has boxed and obviously he's 10 seconds faster than him. But Lion Curry is 10 seconds faster than everyone else. And maybe maybe everyone else is, is running out of fuel and, and they are coasting and lifting. Yeah, he's he's lifting the, the, the throttle to, to not um, to not consume Look how slow. Much fuel. Look how slow Tyler Nelson is going. He wants to make it to the end. That's what, what you have to do, just uh, save fuel and, and be very yeah, slow, but make it to the end, as, as you said, like the, that Senna quote, in order to finish the fifth or fourth, you have to finish. Yeah, exactly. Wow, this is incredible. And we still have two laps to go. Let, I'm looking, but it's I'm last looking lap at, the, at, at the fuel level of Nelson. But Nelson... Alex, Nelson still has one and a half laps of fuel remaining, but that might not be enough for him. This uh, might not be maybe enough maybe. for this either. Oh, <laughs> this, is going, this is going to be a madness. Yeah, but I mean, we've seen going... this in real life with Red Bull. Red Bull has run out of fuel in real life in Bahrain, and everyone laughed at them. Now, we might see this happening in ASR. Benjamin is half a lap of fuel remaining. He's going very, very slow. Surely no fastest lap. Mm, let's see. He, he was... I know he's not going full speed or, or is he? Yeah, people is also... People are, are, are cutting the, the chicane to, to make less, less meters. Just let Benjamin pass and, and you're not going to, to do the, the last lap. That's it. 0 0.14 liters, 0 0.10 liters, That's enough. That's enough. He's 0 0.08 liters, 0.03 liters, 0, 0, 0, 0 liters remaining, but he has finished the race. Joan Sovale finished his race as well in second place, Dominic Savitsky third, Tyler Nelson in fourth place, and Liam Kerr. Liam Kerr has been fast. As a right. flying. Not sure what happened there, everybody, oh. but uh, I will. I'm glad to say everybody that re finished at least at least 85% of the race, so that's 29.5 laps will still score points. So that means everyone down to P9 will still score points. So basically, everybody that was still running at the race at this point still scores points. So it was just about how much of the race you completed for some people, unfortunately. game so oh, alex what are your thoughts uh, crazy crazy uh, yeah um if they are saying on the chat that last season were 31 laps and maybe everyone was using that setup as last season as, as i said before the race just use your your setup from from last season and this season it was 35 laps not 31 and that's why everyone ran out of fuel yeah, but on the other hand, when you are starting a race, you need to check all these things. You cannot uh, focus or, or try what you did last season you, because things change. And I, I, from my point of view, this is a personal mistake from the drivers because you need to be, you need to be alert. Yeah, as I said, you have to be your own engineer and, and driver and, and you have to be aware of, of that and not only being fast on track, but also... Uh, checking those tires, do double checking those things, which are very important. And and even mid race, maybe Liam or Tyler had um, a fuel calculator, as I have. They noticed that uh, they are not going to make it to the end, so they were pretty slow mid race and 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 then saving fuel and and then make it to the end, which um, which led them to P four and P five. Yeah, Paulo Lopez has been in the chat, and boy, oh boy, I feel sorry for you because you have done such such a great great race on those yeah, on the, different strategy. I'm curious, if, uh, uh, sorry, Alex, are we going to have interviews, Jared? Okay, so the race results for the Imola race, race number six of the season. Benjamin Zis win again. He has last time won in Hockenheim. Joan Sovale in second place and Dominic Savitsky completes the podium even with his two mistakes. 
Then Tyler Nelson in fourth place, the American driver finished in the top four with Liam Kerr in fifth place with an amazing, amazing recovery. Hannes Schlogel, sixth, and Anthony Strano in seventh place. Oivin Hogland sadly finishes his race in the pit lane because of the fuel drama as Paulo Lopez as well finished the race in the pit lane. Alvaro Gutierrez, tenth place, and the rest of the drivers are all retirements from Stefan Hoffman, Cabanero, Peter Runde, Peters Dawson, and also Max Haas. <laughs> If I'm looking at these results, the race director has the has had the calmest trace of all of them. <laughs> oh, it's going to it, it, for sure. It's it's a shock for for Hans, for Anthony, and 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 for Hoyvin. He was fighting for the lead. That that was it wasn't uh, it's going to be. Yeah, it, it's yeah, he's going to be kicking himself so hard because he was on the lead. Um, yeah, maybe that's why he was one second um, slower. Mm, you know that uh, from lap 22 onwards, Benjamin was faster. Maybe he was lifting, coasting, saving fuel, and, and he realized that, that, that he wouldn't make it. You, you say that you use a fuel calculator. If you see on your fuel calculator that you have two laps of of fuel and five laps to go is there anything that you can do or you just in that scenario it's it's it's, uh, it's impossible to do to do anything you cannot do a, a lap with um 30 percent um fuel of of one lap but if you notice that with uh maybe 15 20 laps to go yeah you can you can start um uh lifting and coasting that that, that it's uh lifting your throttle way before your breaking point uh, and that time you will lose um, some time, but it's not. Uh, but it's it's the best time you can lose be- uh, before the um, before the breaking points. Yeah. So here we are having the top two uh, of our race: Benjamin Ziz and Joanso Vale. Benjamin, I want to start with you if you are here. Yes. Benjamin, first of all, congratulations for your win. It's been an an amazing race to watch and to commentate. To, to commentate, I want to ask you first of all, how do you feel and what was all that fuel drama? I I don't know about this race. This was so chaotic. Uh, I did notice at the uh, before the race that uh, the setup that I had and that I used last season uh, did not have enough fuel for all the laps, so I did add more fuel to the setup, but even that wasn't enough, so I had to lift for uh, a whole lap or something. Um, at the end there, no, actually, uh, I had really bad mistakes. Um, the penultimate corner, there was a stupid, um, stupid uh, what gap or, or blockage that I had. Um, and it sent me just completely to the outside and Oivan went quickly past me. And then uh, he went to the pits. I was asking why, like what was going on, but he didn't have any uh, fuel anymore. So I just continued because I knew I had enough fuel. Um, I even went to the softs because I wanted to do the quickest lap, but noticed uh, I still need to uh, refuel for one more lap, did that, and then tried to go for the fastest lap, but it wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah, we were here commentating because I can see everyone's fuel of how much you're having, and when you were going to the last lap, I was like, half a liter, a quarter of a liter, 0.0 trend. You, yeah, you've just the, the, line. the last straight is just... Uh, 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 just... Yep, you, you've crossed the line literally with 0.00 <laughs> liters of fuel. Yeah. Um, anyways, you've talked about the mistake that you, the mistakes you have done. Was there any, any moment in your race that you have thought that if done, done, or, or even the will take the win? Uh, I knew I, I had the pace. Um, obviously, I even passed me. Um, and he was at some point even quicker than me. Maybe that was even because he had less fuel than me. But um, yeah, I quickly caught up to him and even thought I could um, overtake him at the straight. But then he just went to the pits and uh, then said, yeah, that's that's a win for me, I think. 
Also, um, yep. I did a stupid mistake uh, in the in the chicane. I just spun, um, even I though I was that, like yeah. 15 seconds ahead or something. Um, like Alex said, like in Hungary or something, it's it's you against yourself, and you have to just remain being consistent, remain being concentrated, and uh, I messed up. <laughs> Uh, you, you don't make anomaly too without uh, breaking eggs, so uh, it's something that you have to experience being alone and, and for 35 laps or 31 yeah. for some of the drivers, sorry. <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, you have to, to be in, in that position and, and recover yourself after you do um, those mistakes. Um, yeah, I have a question for you. Were you, were you confident um, uh, that you could overtake Oibin in normal situation? Uh, with with fuels on on both cars, or, or or were you on the limit trying to to overtake him? I mean, at at one point I did caught up to him, even with more fuel, and he had less fuel. Uh, so I I think I I did have the pace to overtake him. Yeah. Uh, you 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 looked pretty strong uh, qualifying. I think it was uh, point three faster than P two. Uh, then you managed that um, that ten plus second gap uh, where you spun and, and lost it all. But, uh, yeah, has nice raised uh, ups and downs, uh, as we said, but uh, yeah, congr congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, moving now to second place, Juanso Ovale. You've had highs and lows in this race, a lot of incidents and a race that was very fun to commentate. So first of all, congratulations, and second of all, talk us through your race. Uh, hello, thank you. Well, well, in fact, I didn't have many incidents. I mean, I my test wasn't good enough. Uh, I was, I don't know, half a second slower than Benjamin. And with Oivind at the beginning of the race, well, I was keeping my, my distance with him. But once uh, I couldn't get the DRS, he... Well, he, he opened a, a big gap between two or, or three seconds ahead of me. Then I decided to to try to make an overtake because he stopped at lap 15, I think, or 16, I think. I decided to stay quite a bit longer, so maybe in, at the end uh, my tires were better, in, in better shape than, than his, and maybe I could try to overtake him, but no, my, my pace wasn't good enough. But fortunately, I, fortunately, I didn't make any mistake. I didn't spawn. I didn't do anything wrong. Didn't touch any car. So in that in that matter, uh, I'm happy. But it's a shame that I, I couldn't match the the pace of the, of these guys. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But so, so, sorry, sorry, um, sorry, Joan. So uh, I've I've read wrong. So Eloy had this. this yeah. Ago. You are both Spanish. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, if I'm Colombian, but uh, well, I speak and live in Spain, and he's uh, my teammate. Yeah. Yeah, you sound a lot. I, I don't know if anyone told you, but you sound a lot like Fernando Alonso. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For first time, I, I thought, wow, Fernando is he's racing. <laughs> <laughs> I have one last question for you, Juan. Yeah. So, and it is about the fuel. The weird yeah. situation that we've had with the fuel. Did you have 35 laps of fuel, or you no, had to no. Of fuel? No, no. In fact, I thought that I had a fuel for a 35 lap, but I made a mistake and I had fuel for only 34 laps. So uh, at the end, I had to to leave for two whole laps. I left a lot. I lost a lot of seconds, but well, I could manage to to get to the finish line and to keep the the second place. But I noticed at, at the beginning of the session that the the race wasn't wouldn't be 31 laps as in the official sessions. I noticed that, but I made a miscalculation and I put the 57 kilos instead of 58, and that's it. I couldn't get to the end, <laughs> so I had to to leave for for two 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 laps. Yeah. Yeah, Juancho, was it uh, trickier to to drive a car with uh, that many kilos? We we used to run with 50, 52 uh, for for every race, and yeah, with um, kind of uh, 60 kilos, it's it's uh, way difficult to to yeah, drive I a think, car. Or, or is it the same? 
Uh, yes, I, I think I noted a little bit uh, of understeer. Uh, and I think I, uh, I didn't look after my tires as with lower fuel, I think. I think I have to check the telemetry and, and see what happened. But, but yeah, I didn't feel comfortable with my pace. I, I was looking at the times and I was, I was running three three hundreds or so slower than my run normal runs so maybe it was because of that i don't know i have to check it yeah, it's, yeah. it's a stressful not feeling comfortable with the setup with the tires also having to to save fuel yeah it's a, yeah. a tricky situation yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah now moving on to third place dominic savitsky was very fun looking at you because you've had moments where you are very low you've had moments where you are very high obviously overtaking and all round your race has been a pleasure to commentate so dominic talk us through your race from your perspective hello guys yeah very up and down race as you said uh i wasn't expecting anything near uh, the podium so i'm really happy with the result obviously uh, that's because guys behind some had some issue with the fuel i don't know what happened because uh, on the grid uh, when i uh, joined the grid then the spotter said that i had to refuse which in the formula one car isn't possible so at the moment i went back to the garage at a couple of uh, liters of fuel or kilos of fuel and then i was good but uh, i think some guys uh, didn't do such a thing so might be the case and on lap 31st i think um, i went to the pit because i had um, drive through penalty due to too many incidents yeah i did 19 off tracks which is horrible but okay and i saw like some guys uh, also uh, pulling to the pits and i thought like they have a penalty as well so the race isn't over for me but then it turned out that they are stopping on their uh, pit stall and i was really surprised because didn't know actually what happened until like a few laps later yeah i have one more question for you and it's more about your name. I have said the entire stream, uh, Dominic Savitsky. Is that right? Or yeah, that's perfect. That's the first time somebody actually pronouncing my surname correct because everyone call me Sawiki, but I'm actually Savitsky. So thanks a lot. <laughs> that's a good pronunciation. Yeah. And, Thank and you very much. Wanna... And also, one last question yeah. uh, from me. Go to, on, Alex. To, to Dominic. Um, it, it was regarding quality tires. Uh, were you trying to make um, um, a medium soft strategy, uh, uh, doing quality quality times with uh, with the medium tires? Uh, no, actually, I um, I changed the setup for the qualifying, so I qualified on softs, but uh, then I changed from uh, VRS to Apex, and I. Uh noticed that the Apex is way better and I was practicing on VRS before so I just put mediums just to make some uh, race laps uh, on medium tires during the qualification so I wasn't trying to improve my time on uh, medium tires and my best time was on softs so I started on softs as well Okay, yeah, I, I was hyped that uh, you were doing a, a crazy strategy which uh, I think maybe it's faster doing mediums than softs but yeah you are you you have to start the, the race in the middle of the pack and it's um it's not the, the best situation to be in in the middle of uh, of every car in, in turn one so yeah great great race congratulations on on that podium finish yeah thanks yes and thank you to everyone who has joined to our stream and to everyone who has wrote in the chat in these two hours that we've had the stream it's always a pleasure to talk to you guys and obviously to commentate this amazing race thank you alex you've been absolutely amazing at commentating i think if you have any more problems with your racing you can seriously consider it changing your career because you are amazing at commentating also thank you jared for everything that you do week in week out with all the buttons and all the crazy things that i could never do uh, never do and the uh, next race is going to be again monday at the same hour 
and until then take care guys and see you next time